Hello, everyone. So um, thank you all for joining me. I uh, apologize about not being available last week. Last Sunday was Valentine's Day, so I decided to take the day off and spend it with family. Um, and we've got a, quite a few updates because I just basically took that week off. So uh, a lot going on, kind of more or less just updates to the standard projects um, as things are going on. Um, there's actually a couple updates I'm going to leave out for now, which includes the, the, the indoor strawberries. They're coming along quite nicely. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm not going to do heavy on that update. But in any case, thank you so much. Now, I apologize. My lighting is a little off today um, because my normal blocking of the sunlight because I, of course, do this at noon and light it just happens to be shining in. But oh, well, who cares? You know, it's all good. You hopefully can see me. Um, and we're good to go. So today we're going to be talking about, like I said, about five different topics. So we're going to, I replanted the string bean bonsai. So these are the first vegetable plants that have sort of officially become bonsai, I guess, in a sense, because they've gone to their, their, their pots. They, you know, I've, I've taken them out of the party cups, which make pretty good, like, uh, containers for starting plants, but I've now moved them to bowls that I'm using. Um, for those who don't know, I, instead of like spending money on like real bonsai pots for all these things, because I intend to do a lot of them. Oh, there's another topic I wanted to cover. Well, we'll talk about a lot of extra stuff at the end. I just don't have good photos or things. So, um, but I've been using pots, sorry, super tangent. I've been buying pots at, at um, you know, Goodwills, at thrift stores, and I'm using those pots as bonsai containers. I'm not even drilling a hole. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So also the current and mulberry cuttings I had taken, all are doing fantastic. Like that whole process ended up working really, really well. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, a lot of the seeds that I started for some more like vegetable garden bonsai, um, those have all come up. I've replanted those into larger, um, the solo cup, the party cup containers. So um, they're kind of entering the next stage of growth before I put them in their, their I don't want to say final like bonsai pot, but before I pot them up to become bonsai. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the chickens um, very quickly and also some thoughts I've been having about the winter greenhouse, especially where the 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 grow lights are concerned and sort of my greenhouse within a greenhouse and it just provide kind of an update to that. Hey, great sky troll. I've planted my tiny Tim tomatoes and the red bell peppers. I've transplanted my broccoli to my flood uh, ebb bed and I'm expecting to be ready for prawns by April. Awesome. So glad to hear. Thanks for keeping me updated. So it's, um, lost my train of thought. So we'll talk about that, that, that greenhouse situation. Can move over to my screen here. Okay, so I just want to give a, some quick updates. I talked to previously that for my string bean bonsai, um, I cut, cut all of the flowers off because I was trying to focus on green growth. But being string beans, the second I cut off all the flowers, twice as many flowers came on. So I decided to just leave them. I thought they were beautiful. So I just left the flowers on there. I thought they were gorgeous. This is actually after I cut them all off. I think you saw these pre these these photos previously, but I've decided to start um, planting them out. So these are examples of four bowls. So I had six string bean plants, but I only planted out four of them. So I had these four matching bowls. I still have the other plants and maybe I'll put them in something else, but I had these nice deep bowls, uh, again, that I got at the thrift store. I wanted something to put at the bottom to provide a reservoir because again I'm not with these bowls I'm not going through the trouble of trying to drill through the the ceramic jigs punky hey what's up <laughs> um I, I I don't necessarily I mean I may change my mind if this end up being a problem who knows maybe I'll move to proper pots or proper like bonds I think with actual like real drainage hey wildly Canadian thanks for joining us love the bowls missed you last week yeah I'm actually I appreciate the missing. Yeah, so I just took last week off, um, kind of, kind of last second. So I apologize about that. I don't have a good way of alerting people. Like if you follow me on Instagram or you follow my non-video posts here, you know that's where I kind of post the updates. But I don't really have um, an announcement system otherwise. So I try to remain pretty consistent. But you know, holidays and and life happens. So so I decided that I was gonna instead of trying to drill a hole in the ceramic and, and potentially damage the bowls. And again, when you start having that, you got to create like a drip pan and that, unless you have a really ornamental drip pan that goes with your ornamental pot, 
it kind of detracts from the value. So I wanted to just have nice contained like bowls that I can plant these in because I'm kind of putting around the house. I don't have a good, I don't have a good example. They're right over there. They're actually, a, the, the four of these four that I'm planting out now are actually kind of on the top shelf along with the strawberries under those like LED strip lights. Um, I didn't have a good picture of that. I think I've shown a picture in the past, but in any case, just imagine it. Um, but in any case, so I, I, I knew I wanted to be able to put these plants around the house decoratively. So I didn't want too much, too much drainage to have to worry about. So I decided to just put something as a reservoir in the bottom, just enough so extra water could drain off a bit. And, you know, I was, I was thinking about doing some kind of like pebbles or something, um, but I didn't really have anything. I didn't feel like buying anything. I tried to Try not to buy a lot of extra stuff in general, since I do have a lot of projects that end up buying a ton of stuff. For all the projects, I try not to, when I don't have to buy something, I don't. Uh, especially these days where I try not to leave the house too much. So I have a ton of hydroton. So back in the day, I used to do gigantic, when I did a hydroponics, I would do gigantic um, uh, media beds that were all hydroton, or expanded clay petals, or hydroton, or however you want to pronounce it, or whatever you call them. So these clay pebbles, I had a ton of them. I used to have like, I think it was like 10 five gallon buckets of this stuff. I give a lot of that away, but I still have a full gallon bucket. I don't use anywhere near that anymore because when I do do hydroponics, I tend to do the small cup variety that uses like, you know, 15 pebbles in it, you know, so, um, you know, I don't use this a lot, but I still have a lot of it. So I was like, you know what, I'll just use this as drainage. Uh, so this is actually me taking the, the string bean bonds out of the, the party cups, the red party cups. Yeah, so we had a lot of roots. So I actually had to, to um, not really trim the roots back quite yet, but I really did a lot of work teasing them apart and kind of like setting them down. <laughs> Thumbs up for Punky. Thank you so much, Homestead Aquarius. Sealed bottom pots are sometimes difficult. Yeah, I hear you. Cannot get those. I had to use rocks. Yeah, and I, I oh, you rocks in your hydroponics, yeah. Or your aquaponics. So, um, I don't remember how I got all the, the clay pebbles, to be quite honest. I think I ordered, just accumulated them over time, ordering them online. We do have local hydroponics stores, so I'm sure I have it too. But in any case, so, um, so yeah, so I just put this on top, added some extra dirt, and there we go. Now, I don't have any kind of mulch. I considered getting, like, um, very, very fine, like, bark mulch, something that's kind of made for indoor plants, because I do sell that. Hopefully something that's not full of bugs and or has otherwise been like cleansed. But I'm considering putting on that on top to help um, keep the increase the moisture retention because I'm so in love with using mulch in my pots outdoors. Thought about bringing that indoors. We'll talk about that in the future most likely. But in any case, I did that with all four of the bean plants. Um, and I don't have a final picture. I thought I took a final picture of them all done on the shelf, but I apparently did not. So we'll just, uh, you'll just have to envision it. I'll be sure to share it in the future. They are adorable though, because I've started putting on beans, which I also thought I had a picture of, but I don't seem to, it does not seem to be in my collection here. So I think I had some issues in my camera transporting, transporting the files over. But in any case, they've, I, they've put it, like I said, they put on a ton of flowers and the flowers are turning into beads and I'm just letting it go. Like, I don't know how much more. So basically I know for regular string beans, usually what you, one trick that people have is that after every time you get like a flush of beans, string beans, you tend to cut the plant back and let it grow out and put on more. And supposedly it's it's good for production. I mean, some people say that, but I've kind of, I think I'm kind of taking that philosophy with these. Like I'm gonna let the beans grow out. I'm gonna pick them, daughter eat them, I eat them, somebody eat them. And then um, I'll let the plant grow out kind of like in a traditional bonsai fashion. So we'll keep doing that um, as the stem grows. Because as you can see, the main stem isn't thick. It just does not look like a bonsai in any way or form. Um, I just wanted to get it in a bonsai thing just to kind of, I don't know, get a feel for how it looks and how it presents. You know, how a, a string bean or these non-traditional... And I, I think they look good. They definitely look like house plants. Again, I'll get you photos for the future. And I've trimmed some of them back a bit. So let's talk about the cuttings. So the current cuttings and the mulberry cuttings, actually all the cuttings have done really well. Um, my, all of them have sprouted for the most part. And again, I thought I had a picture of it, but my grape ones have started. But I think I showed one quick picture last week. No, sorry, not last week, but the last show, the week before, because I took last week off. Um, it's just, everything's putting on, have started putting on flowers, but the currants did amazing. The currants actually put on, I think I, will I talked about this last time, but the currants actually uh, put on flowers as soon as they started putting on leaves. 
like once the cutting started to leaf out, they they were putting on flowers and I actually cut all the flowers off of those because I was like, okay, well, I don't want to like waste too much energy on that. Um, this is an example of the cuttings uh, rooting and I put them all in their own separate solo cups. But the mulberries too, the mulberries have grown out. They put on lots of leaves, but then almost immediately started putting on berries. So I have these cuttings still in um, a nutritionless media. So, so just sterile coconut coir, wet coconut coir. That's what I've sprouted all these in under on a heat mat. And they just, they just went nuts and they started putting on mulberries. And now I'll be quite honest, I did go ahead and transplant all these because I'm like, okay, they're putting on fruit. So they're gonna want some nutrition. So I ended up taking them out of the pot. They have great root, root growth. Unfortunately, it was a little intertwined, so I did some root damage. So hopefully I won't kill them. Oops, I don't have a, man, half my photos are gone. So whatever. Um, but just picture them in their own party cups, their own red solo cups, and, um, and actually a nutritious potting soil blend. So hopefully they have enough nutrition now. I haven't, as of right now, I have not cut off the, the berries. Because part of me is like, I don't know, maybe I should just let the berries stay on there, you know, who knows. Um, so um, it is what it is, but I'm just impressed by how well these are doing. Like all these cuttings actually ended up working really well. I mean, these are all, you know, plants that, that root and regrow pretty easily. But um, even the grape and the, the, the hardy kiwis, the kiwi berry cuttings that I took, for the most part, they've actually put on leaves. And that's really encouraging. So I think... I don't know if I'll necessarily do it this way because I want to multiply the amount of plants I have, but I think I'm going to try the air layering on a lot of my berry bushes um, throughout the season. So like at the beginning of the season or once they've put on some good growth in the spring, I'm going to start doing some air layerings on the plants, take them off, um, and then maybe grow them in the greenhouse because I'm still trying to figure out what the, the future of the greenhouse will be. And we'll talk about that in the future of this presentation. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so these are some other seeds that I planted. I planted a yellow squash. That's the big one that you can see right here. If you can see my cursor, hopefully. Um, then the, the tomato plants right here, I ended up removing a couple of these because I had got quite a few sprouts. So again, I just pruned the ones I didn't want off. Just um, So I only ended up planting two because I didn't want it like a ton of tomato plants. And these were fairly new seeds, so I didn't worry too much about them. Um, but I got a summer squash there. I got some uh, yellow pear tomatoes that I'm going to try bonsai. And also you can see a little bit in the back, there's another little squash plant just coming up. That's actually a table king. Um, it's a, it's a basically a bush variety of acorn, like a miniature acorn. So again, another squash plant that I'm going to try to bonsai, I guess, to see if I can bonsai it, but also keep, get fruit, like have it fruit and actually produce something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You could use a fork to come out, uh, comb out the roots of bonsai for resetting the pot. Thank you for the suggestion. That's awesome. Looking, that makes me, <laughs> that makes you itch. So, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, th these I just planted out where I got, where do I have them right here? So, um, I think this might be from last time because this is, uh, the peas I planted out. I don't know if I showed these again, it's been a couple weeks, so I've kind of lost track of what I have and have not shown. Um, but anyway, so basically everything that all the seeds that I started and a lot of the cuttings are in their own solo cups. That's the takeaway. So let's talk about the chickens. So uh, as I talked about in my last episode, I lost a chicken. I think just at old age, there was no, Ill I did not observe any real illness other than they were acting a little off um, the day before. Uh, so I unfortunately lost one of the barred rocks. Not shown here is the Easter egg or the white Easter egg. That one is still alive, it's just not in the photo. Um, they're being kind of weird because we've had a lot of snow and they do not like stepping in the snow. None of these chickens do. So basically what happens is they come out of the coop and then they fly up on top of the coop and that's where they spend like their whole day, which doesn't work well if I'm trying to feed them and give them water because all that stuff's on the ground outside. So I ended up having to take some pine shavings that I had leftover um you know it's always good to just have pine shavings around i used to put it in their their nests and whatnot throughout the season but i spread that along the ground so they didn't have to walk on cold the cold snowy ground so they get to walk on cold pine shavings instead which is much better for their feet so i went ahead and dumped out the usual scraps and food and um you can't see it but the water actually you can see a little bit there's a black water dish off in the lower right hand corner of the photo here actually no you can't because my beautiful face is blocking that so 
Um, so yeah, they're doing okay. Um, I don't like the, the, the coupe that I have. I mean, I think it was fine and it's fine for a starter coupe. Having done it again, I would have built it up more. I would have actually built like a, built it taller or built it up on legs and, and it kept the bottom sealed because, um, they really don't like it. Um, obviously ground contact, it's going to rot, but they, they are not keen on being in that coupe. They never really have, they, I mean, they never really have been keen and they don't really have an alternative. So, I mean, this is it. So, um, I definitely think I'll be investing in a much better coupe next year and possibly a covered run. Now, not, I'm, I have this big fenced in area that I keep them in where I dump all these leaves. I don't want that whole thing encased and covered, but I think I might have to, when I build them a better coupe, I may also build them, um, some kind of shelter so that they can at least go outside and walk around that won't be covered in snow because they're really not thrilled about it. And, um, I mean, we'll see in the future. I'm also thinking the coop that I end up with also have it in such a way that I can put at least a little bit of food and water for them indoors so they don't have to go outside. Um, I was just, I'm just so spoiled because I had, you know, I had that amazing coop that I actually that had a, a covered run, um, a run that I, so, if people remember from my, my previous house, the, 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 the big old house on the, four, the 17 acres, you know, I, they had a big old coop with an attached run. I then put a roof over the run and then ended up enclosing the entire run to one gigantic chicken house. Um, and it was like a chicken barn and it really was fantastic. And I, I do miss that in a lot of ways, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Some more pictures. So, yeah, I'm just showing here that this tarp I put up, oops, that kind of worked for a year. Uh, has since, of course, torn and it's kind of fallen off and it's not really working as any kind of shelter anymore, but that at least kept a lot of the snow off and gave them some room out to just walk outside. But this, this is, this coop is not forever. Um, it definitely, I need a new solution this spring. So I'm saving up my bills now. If anyone would like to uh, contribute to that fund, I will uh, uh, create a plaque. And I'll hang your name slash names on the, uh, the coop. Because the coop I want to get is, is pretty expensive. Um, so yeah, make your contributions now and thank you ahead of time. So let's talk about the greenhouse. So I have this big lean-to greenhouse. I'm sure anyone who's watching this has seen previous episodes. I've talked about it before. Most people finding my channel these days, these days, these days are actually finding it through my videos from me building this lean-to greenhouse. So you probably know the story. You also probably know the story of um, me trying to grow through the winter here and basically creating a makeshift greenhouse within a greenhouse. So you have these, um, these racks, these shelves, these whatever you want to call it. And, you know, I put, um, I put plastic over it. I have plants in there. And I put all these hidden harvest green light, uh, excuse me, uh, grow lights in there just to use that as a way to heat the greenhouse at night. And the whole thing was covered in a tarp. So something happened I, I, and I'm not sure what it is, but the plants started doing not so good. The peas were the ones that weren't looking so good. They were kind of shriveling it up, shrivel, shriveling up and the leaves were getting kind of crunchy and it wasn't due to lack of water because they had just recently watered them but weird temperature swings were happening. Now it gets really hot in there during the day and it's gotten really cold at night and being covered in that plastic, that greenhouse within a greenhouse and be covered in a tarp, you know, may not have been, you know, too disastrous for them. They seem to do well most of the season, but lately something was off. And I think it might've started when our, my timer uh, was off because we lost power temporarily, which threw off when the lights were coming on and whatnot. I talked about this in my last episode, but um, I kind of decided that I don't know if this is really working out. It seemed to work really, really well, but I haven't gotten anything out of it yet. I feel like I should have seen something by now. Um, and now that the plants are, are sad and continue to be sad, I don't know what to think. So I ended up turning off the grow lights. Uh, I pulled the tarp up and basically moved all these, uh, cracky rails that I had hydroponic rails back all to, to just let some light in. So instead of having, oops, so instead of having a greenhouse within a greenhouse that was then covered and 
lit by grow lights. I turned off the grow lights and, I, and now it's more just a greenhouse than a greenhouse. The only light they're getting is light during the day. And the plants still look pretty sad. Um, I don't know. I don't know if we'll get anything out of this, which is really disappointing because I put a lot of um, thought and effort and time into this and it seemed to be working really well for a long time. But they've all just sort of, I don't know, kind of fallen off. And I haven't really been able to identify what that is yet. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't really know where to go at this point with this. I don't know if this is a, as great a solution as I thought. I was so excited about this, but honestly, I'm having, I'm getting more out of plants that I'm, you know, my bonsais are producing more stuff than these plants are kind of being out there. I don't know if the carrots are ready at this point. It feel like, I feel like it's been a while and they're, they're very small varieties of carrots. They're supposed to be very quick varieties of carrots. These peas were supposed to be very quick varieties. I feel like I should have seen something by now. Um, so I don't know what it is. I They weren't happy. And it, and it got me from, it, I might remember from my last episode, I was really pondering whether or not it was worth even having a greenhouse. Um, because it, it felt like a greenhouse is such, such a, 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 an environment of extremes. You know, it gets hot during the day, even in the winter, and at night gets cold because it can't retain the heat. And, you know, I began pondering if it just made sense to build a structure that was heavily insulated, completely covered, so no, no, uh, no greenhouse, basically, and then just put, you know, big old, uh, like, grow lights in there as, like, an artificial sun. So I don't know what the future will be. I'm also considering bringing the harvest Hidden Harvest Grow Lights inside for the bonsai, because I'm going to run out of room quick. And I'm actually thinking, I think they'll they'll perfectly fit. I don't know if you're familiar with the Kalax. It's a, it's a, camera keeps drifting. The Kalax is the, basically the cube shells from Ikea. And we have a couple of them. We have a, a you know, a two by four one that's kind of acting as a shelf in the living room here. And in the kitchen, we have a, three by three one three by four one something like that that also acts as like food storage and um very handy very sturdy i love them to pieces but i was realizing that the cube is such that um it isn't just like a square shelving it's like deep too and i think that'd be a perfect size to fit in in each of the cubes each of the squares i don't have a good picture of this unfortunately but i'll perhaps talk about it in the future um they'll perfectly fit a hidden harvest light because i'm trying to think of how best to kind of like display and also grow these um these bonsai and i think it would be a really nice display if i bought like white those white sh like a white version of those shelves to help bounce the light back put a hidden harvest grow light in each of the cubes basically that'd be a perfect little display slash grow situation for a bonsai so i'm thinking about buying i think the smallest one i can buy is a two by two kalax from ikea and then I'll have four of those kind of cube shell spaces to experiment. Take four of the, the grow lights from the greenhouse, which are currently off and not doing anything out there. Because again, it's now just more traditional um, greenhouse. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, we're getting to the point where the temperatures, I mean, we're definitely not anywhere near spring, um, but temperatures will hopefully be warming up-ish soon, um, I'm hoping over the next month so i'm hoping we'll be able to uh it'll be okay to just have the greenhouse be a more traditional greenhouse but we'll see i hope i get something out of these plants i would be really disappointed especially considering how excited i was for this green this like little garden in the greenhouse um if it doesn't work out i would be kind of bummed but you know i'll move on to the next thing maybe the greenhouse maybe the greenhouse can't be everything i want it to be and i think somebody had commented on one of my videos where you know it's maybe using it more of a you know, um, it's kind of just a, a, a protection for the winter for things. So maybe it ends up just being a place where I go out and who knows, who knows? Maybe it's not something I use in the winter and I just kind of shut it down. And maybe in the, the worst of summer, I'm not really using it either. You know, um, you know, maybe the fall, I'm just transitioning cuttings in to like overwinter them for like my perennial, my, my berry bushes. You know, in the spring, maybe kind of like early spring where it's starting to warm up, I'm using it as a place for um, 
Eh, who knows? I don't know. I'm just, I... <laughs> yeah, war warming up-ish soon. Yes, exactly, Homestead Aquarius. I, I hope it will be, I mean, once we get into to March, temperatures are still going to be cold, but after that, I mean, they, they're going to, we shouldn't have as much extremes, I guess is my, my point. Um, built a satisfactory heater for my aquaponics, even in the coldest nights at 64. That's within tolerances and grows unbelievably good broccoli. Oh, that's so exciting to hear. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the future of this greenhouse will be. Um, I thought it was going to be like a godsend, and I'm not really sure. I think I had the wrong idea of greenhouses, so that's kind of what I'm realizing. And I'll probably be focusing more on my, uh, during the, the primary growing season, on my, obviously, my container garden outdoors, and then winter will be very bonsai focused, I think. And um, maybe, maybe the bonsais live out in the greenhouse. Maybe that's what the greenhouse becomes, where it's like, um, I put them out there and... I do whatever I can to keep them somewhat happy during the, the winter, or I bring them inside during the winter. I don't know. We'll figure it out, people. We'll figure it out. Because of you and your support, or something. But in any case, speaking of support, burp, burp, thank you, as always, to those who have decided to support me in the ways that you support me. Um, specifically, thank you to the patrons on pa the patrons on Patreon that um, continue to throw dollar bills my... <laughs> Throw dollar bills at me every month. I do appreciate it. Thank you to those who uh, watch my videos. Give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate the thumbs up um, and the obligatory comments after the fact. Uh, whenever you can share a video, that is extremely helpful. The last couple of videos I've done have gotten a lot of attention. Um, they've uh, got a lot more views and a lot more um, shares and everything. So thank you so much for that support. We're getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. So I'm really, really fighting for that. I'm, I'm hoping to make it. It's been a long time coming and I think we can do it. So thank you for the support in that regards. Uh, thank you to those who are using my Amazon affiliate link. That is uh, basically free money that you can throw my way. All you have to do is go to click on that link before you do any shopping. I keep it in the description of every single one of these videos. And um, I mean, there's other little random ways to help me, of course, uh, you know, PayPal and all those sorts of things. But thank you for just watching and liking this video and sharing when you can, because that at the end of the day is the most important thing to be able to grow this channel. Because growing the channel means more people are watching and that's awesome. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to try to um, make this video somewhat short because unfortunately I have a lot of work I got to get done today. Um, let me check the comments before I go. The chat. Almost 10,000. Yeah, we're getting there, Homestead Aquarius. We're getting there. Um, I think last I saw it was like 9,700 something. So, I mean, that last 200 something will be, will happen pretty quick. So, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Um, it'll be a really amazing milestone to reach. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's huge. 10,000 is huge. Uh, I feel... That's it. So if I feel that I had the hoop house on Q bed with more light in the winter, it would do, do even better. Okay. Sorry. I think that's a conversation you guys are having. So, so yeah. So as always, I would love to hear people's thoughts on the greenhouse. Um, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on other kind of vegetables I should try to bonsai. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on pretty much anything. Um, yeah. So anyway, I think that's it. So thank you so much, so much for watching. Uh, as always, whether you're watching here live, hello live people, or you're watching after the fact, I really appreciate it. Again, give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey. Bye-bye.